Right, hi everyone, so thanks for the warm welcome. Um, when Angie's right, when she asked me to do this, it was a bit, okay, fine, I'll, uh, I'll try my best. Um, so I'll, I'm gonna give an overview of my background, who I am, what I've done, why you should listen to me, if you want to, um, and then how, how you can try and get the best out of your solicitors. It, it's difficult, and there's reasons why it's difficult to get the best out of solicitors, as property investors, and I'll go through those reasons in an effort to try and make it all a bit easier for you all. I am a solicitor and a property investor, so I'm wearing two hats here. This is Candid. Um, didn't realise there'd be other solicitors in the room, <laughs> but but it, none of this is have sympathy with solicitors. It isn't that at all. It's this is why they do the weird stuff that they do. <laughs> and how you can use all of that knowledge to get better results for you. So that's my big face, we'll move from that. Um, how to get the best from your solicitors. So I am a solicitor. Uh, I am the business development manager for Talbot's Law. So I don't practice anymore. I've, I've done 20 years in the law. I'll go over what I've done and what experience I've got. But my role now is, is partly to help property investors, signpost them to the right people. I work for a massive firm, a full service law firm, so that we can offer lots of different services. That's a lot of the problem with solicitors is when you've got smaller firms, nothing wrong with smaller firms, but when you've got smaller firms, when there's anything unusual, they can't service it and therefore it's got to go somewhere else. So these are my contact details. It's at the end as well. If anyone wants to take a picture, take a picture. That's my work professional contact details. Um, so who am I and, and why you might want to listen to me? So I'm a qualified solicitor. I qualified in uh, 2015. I started work for a law firm straight after doing some legal exams in college. So I started in 2002, which is a long time ago. Um, and I started pretty much as a conveyances secretary almost. I just went in and started doing some typing, type completion statements, stuff like that. Um, I'm clearly a master at longevity because I'm still at the same firm. So I haven't moved, but that firm was very much a small high street firm. So we saw all normal types of high street stuff. And this is why I can speak with some authority onto the struggles that smaller firms have. But we were recently acquired by Talbot's, which is the firm that I'm the business development manager for now. It's a firm based mainly in the West Midlands, but it's got a 30 million pound turnover, 500 staff. We do everything from wills right through to massive mergers and acquisitions. So that's where I am now. My background was spending the first 10 years of my career in conveyancing, every type of conveyancing. So I worked out as part of this presentation request that I dealt with about three and a half thousand residential conveyancing transactions over those, over those years. Um, I hate conveyancing, can't stand it. I think it's the worst thing ever. Um, so I managed to escape from that, um, but dealt with nearly every weird type of conveyancing that you could ever deal with. So a lot of people that do not, buying and selling regularly will know what all of these things are. So restrictive covenants, short leases, flying freeholds, rent charges, rights of way, adverse possession applications, grants of easement, exchange with delayed completion. That was stuff we did all the time. That, that's normal, normal conveyancing stuff for us. Very frustrating things to deal with, um, but dealt with that day in, day out. Uh, next five years, I spent dealing with wills, trusts and estates. So I spent a long period of time helping clients save a lot of money by reducing their IHT liabilities, which can very easily be done actually with a bit of planning. So uh, that, that graph there was just, as I was preparing the presentation, I thought it was quite interesting that we, we as a country don't actually pay much inheritance tax and one of the reasons for that, I think, is if you have good planning and you listen to good solicitors and IFAs, you can pretty much mitigate any IHT liability, really. Um, did a lot of deeds of variation, so you can change wills after someone's died, which sounds really weird, but perfectly legal, you can do that. 
So, so it spent a lot of time doing that. that. That led in really well with creative strategies because it, it, I'd already got the conveyancing background, but it helped me establish there's lots of pieces of paper you can use to do different things with property and finance. So that was five years, and then I don't think I'm Tom Cruise, by the way. <laughs> I just thought that, that's the picture I'll use. Um, so the final five years in law, because I don't class myself as being in law anymore because I don't practice it. Uh, so the last five years was spent doing quite heavy litigation work, anything from residential landlord and tenant eviction work right through to commercial litigation, suing conveyancing solicitors for lots of mistakes they made, um, challenging the validity of wills, getting wills overturned, uh, challenging the distribution of estates. So in terms of legal experience, I've, I've done quite a bit of the normal journey. So everything from conveyancing, which is you know, the, how you would normally encounter a solicitor right through to litigation stuff, which is when you don't want to encounter a solicitor probably. So I have got quite a good background and it allows me to look at why solicitors do the things they do and understand why they do the things they do and how we might be able to do certain things to speed them up, which is what we all want, really. So my pop property background is when I started doing the conveyancing work, we had a lot of landlords that worked, uh, did ask my boss to do the conveyancing for them. So I wanted to get in on the act once I realised what it was all about. Um, that was the first delightful property I bought in 2004. Um, still own that, still got it. Been rented pretty much every day since the day I bought it. Um, I had no idea of the concept of buy, refurbish, remortgage. Didn't really, Facebook wasn't a thing then. Internet really wasn't that big. So I was doing it without really knowing what I was doing. Buy one, refurbish it, remortgage. Easy to do because it was pre-2008, etc. So I bought one in 2004, one in 2005, 2006, then in 2007, and then it was the financial crisis. So I stopped, which was bloody stupid, really. Um, but then I started again in 2015. We bought a family home. I finished my degree, did, did all the stuff I needed to do. Um, and then I started buying again in 2015. In 2017, I formed McCutcheon Davis Properties. So that's a property investment company that I own with my business partner. So we now do stuff like that instead of doing stuff like that. Uh, that might actually still be profitable, more profitable than that, but that's a different story. Uh, I decided I had enough in, of the law in 2020. Didn't want to do the practicing of it anymore, the day-to-day -day stuff. Um, but then coincidentally, the partners in my firm decided that they wanted to sell out. They, they couldn't do it easily because they had this small firm, uh, not mentality, but you're always having to generate work. So they asked me whether I would stay on and help them facilitate the sale of the business to the company that now ultimately owns that business. So when that company took over, they asked me to be business development manager because I've got experience of, of legal sides of things which most business development managers don't have. So how can you use, and this is, a, this, this is very much focused on uh, property. You can use what I'm saying here in different areas of the law, litigation and things like that, but this is very much focused on property. So how can you use solicitors to scale a property portfolio and shortcut the journey and cut out the hassle. That's, that's what we want to do. It, it's a hassle. I think it's a hassle. Whenever I deal with solicitors, I, I always found, find it quite difficult. I've changed the technique and changed what I've done over the years. So I've used all my 20 years of legal knowledge to help me scale my portfolio. Where, where I am now, I'm scaling it quite aggressively using the knowledge. But but solicitors are really, really important because they can make or break deals, and they do break deals as well. You know, if things take too long, then the whole, all that work you've put in, all that direct to vendor work, all the work with the agent, all the things you've agreed, it can all fall down. So they're essential, 
when you're borrowing money, you've got to use a solicitor. The bank will say you've got to use a solicitor. So they're absolutely essential. But for you guys, and for me, it's better to work with good solicitors that understand what needs to be done rather than choosing the cheapest generic lawyer. 